Ислам, не спеши. Правую, правую, правую. Вот, отлично. Не спеши. Ислам, теперь не спеши, братчика. Теперь не спеши. Твой! Твою! На голову правую ногу надо поставить. Правую ногу на голову. Да, да! Осторожно! Не спеши, осторожно! What makes a submission fighter the greatest? Is it by the number of submissions? How notable the opponent is or how masterfully they undertake these submissions? <laughs> MMA fighters have some crazy hands and feet that could put your lights out. Sterling on the oh! Chance and risk getting knocked out! Oh my god! But some are destined to make people go to sleep and quit totally. The submission is oh, he's oh, he's oh. The UFC is filled with these MMA submission artists. Anderson Silva! Looking to choke out Anderson! Dan is in deep trouble! He's dead! It's all over! But the greatest of them all did not show his onions in the octagon. Who is this mystery fighter? Before we jump, let's start with one of the greatest submission specialists, Antonio Rodrigo Noguera. Antonio Rodrigo! With a 61% submission win rate, Big Nog wasn't just an MMA fighter, he was a maestro in the octagon. And his submissions left opponents helpless. Minotauro's rise to the top began when he became the heavyweight champion in the formidable Pride Fighting Championships. He escaped everything, so my... <laughs> is hovering in the wings now. Mark, you're licking your chops. From November 2001 to March 2003, he ruled with an iron fist, or should we say, an iron arm? Oh, yes, it's gonna be okay. The next year, Nogueira's name was etched as a finalist in the 2004 Pride FC Heavyweight Grand Prix. And finally, aggressiveness, and we take a look at some of that aggression there. Nice oh. shot there by Herajanov. Pride Heavyweight Tournament Final. What truly distinguishes Nogueira is his unparalleled achievement of holding championship titles in both Pride Fighting Championships and the UFC. I want a piece of that one. I got my head out of my ass. Okay, now. While Nogueira's reputation as a jiu-jitsu wizard has clinched him victories, with 21 of his 34 wins coming via submission, names like Dan Henderson, Mark Coleman, and Kiyoshi Tamura are all on his conquest list. Big Nog's toolbox of submission moves include arm bars, triangle chokes, and can choose whether there will be knees and kicks. And their different variations. But Noguera's signature move was the arm bar, with 12 out of his 21 submissions coming from it. What truly sets him apart was his audacious style of fighting from the bottom, using an offensive open guard that defied the conventional way. Yeah, here we go again. Oh, there it is. Again. Oh. A showman and a master of the unorthodox, Kazushi Sakuraba. We're going to look at the career, techniques, impact, and the legacy of Sakuraba on the sport and the entertainment side of the industry. See, as a professional wrestler, he made sure his entrances into the pride ring were always a spectacle and entertaining showcased his mystique of catch and submission wrestling for all to see in the hollowed rings of Ryzen Fighting Federation and Pro Wrestling Noah. Known as the IQ Wrestler, Sakuraba earned another name when he masterfully defeated four Gracies, earning him his name as the Gracie Hunter. Sakuraba handed BJJ legend Hoist Gracie his first ever defeat in a 90-minute epic duel. As a catch wrestler, Sakuraba wielded a potent weapon, the double-top wrist lock. With this submission hold, he tamed the mightiest grapplers of his era. But Sakuraba was not merely a technician, he was a showman, dazzling audiences with cartwheel passes and daring leaps from above. When he showed that Gracie can be defeated. Yet, beneath the showmanship lies an unmatched level of technical mastery. His command of the Kimura grip extended beyond submissions. It became a tool for seamless positional reversals. Look at the expression of Sakuraba. Sakuraba's legacy rested on 19 of his 27 victories achieved through submission. 
sitting as one of the greatest submission artists, Hoist Gracie. Oh, he tapped. Was that an arm lock? Yes. No, no. I think, I think he choked him out. The original godfather of Brazilian jiu-jitsu in the UFC. That Gracie shit's no joke, though. Mm. That family. They changed the world. The world. Boys Gracie proved it in the UFC, and he changed martial arts forever. And that, that family's probably the most consequential, the most important, significant family in the history of martial arts. The Gracie family changed martial arts worldwide. Whose touch redefined combat sports. In those early days, Hoist's dominance was nothing short of supernatural. He wasn't winning. He was conducting masterclasses in submissions, finishing his first 11 fights in the very first round. Patrick will not like this. He will not like this. It was as if he held the keys to a secret realm of combat, leaving opponents tapping out in disbelief and UFC fans in shock. The world had never seen anything like it. Yet, one of the most iconic moments in MMA history was the saga of Hoist Gracie and his arch-rival, Kazushi Sakuraba. These battles were the spark that ignited a wildfire of interest in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Fighters, both aspiring and established, flocked to embrace this new art, and mixed martial arts would never be the same again. The great submission artists of today owe their journeys to Hoist Gracie, who blazed a trail they now follow. Final seconds of the round. Trying oh, to get to it. One name stands tall as the peak of submission maneuvering. His journey inside and outside the octagon has been a roller coaster filled with twists and turns that ultimately led him to a place of greatness, Charles de Bronx Oliveira. His recent victory over Benil Dariush serves as a reminder that he is far from slowing down. While his striking skills have seen remarkable improvement in recent years, Oliveira's true forte has always been his submissions. That's very tight now. That's oh, it. there's the tap. Charles Oliveira. In fact, Oliveira holds a record that solidifies his claim as the best submission artist the UFC has ever seen. With a staggering 16 submissions to his name, he stands five ahead of the runner-up. But what truly sets him apart is his ability to conquer two weight classes, amassing 10 submissions in the lightweight division and six in the featherweight division. Oliveira's submissions have not been confined to lesser-known opponents. He has showcased his skills on the biggest stage of them all. Notably, he submitted Justin Gaethje and Dustin Poirier in title fights. Kevin Lee. Here, he's got a Oliveira forces the tap! Charles Oliveira, another submission! And division legends like Jim Miller and Clay Guida fell victim to DeBronx. His sheer number of submissions and the quality of opponents he has submitted during title fights unarguably place him at the zenith of the greatest. A Japanese MMA prodigy, a professional wrestler, and a maestro of submission who has never been submitted in MMA. He's gone, he's gone, he's got to be stopped, surely. He's got, no, he's not conscious. It's over. Shinya Aoki is one of the greatest fighters to never fight inside the UFC octagon, although he has graced the stage of multiple MMA organizations from one championship to dream and pride. As an A-class shoot wrestler, Aoki proudly wears black belts in Judo and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, including two All-Japan Jiu-Jitsu Championships, a Budo Open Championship, a Japan Open Jiu-Jitsu Championship, and an ADCC Japan Championship. Within MMA, Shinya Aoki holds the record for the most submissions in MMA history, with 30 wins coming by way of submission. <laughs> The majority of Aoki's triumphs have been orchestrated through an arsenal of submissions, with arm bars, rear naked chokes, and neck cranks being his favorite weapons. MMA made an impact in combat sports via submission, although the OGs had cleared the path and the new blood are not taking a back seat. The competitions are fiercer and skillful, and no technique reigns supreme as before. Who will stick their claim in this new breed?